Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip Silver Tea. I'm thrilled to introduce you to Mr. Herbert Bell. He is freaking amazing. Um, he, uh, he's got a lot, but today we're going to just focus <laughs> on, <laughs> on healing, the healing power of Tai Chi and Qigong. But first, Herbert, would you just do a quick introduce yourself with respect to those two modalities, like your experience behind it and we'll like just how you got started in it and, and we'll just go from there. And welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Nikki. And uh, <laughs> as I share my my tea today, it's a, a ginger turmeric tea. Um, mm -hmm. I generally drink tea that's pretty much herbal. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll drink some stuff with caffeine, but very rarely. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk a little bit about Qigong and Tai Chi. How did I get into this practice and what drew me to it? Uh, there was a lady by the name of Ailun, and the name of her stone and crystal shop was Ailun's Stone mm -hmm. and Crystal Shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, for many years, I was an environmental health and safety consultant mm -hmm. and uh, training and doing different types of evaluations in the workplace to keep people safe and to prevent uh, harmful things from uh, going into the water or the atmosphere or the soil. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this yearning to go in the shop, but I never did. Mm -hmm. And one day my my copies were delayed and I just said, OK, I might as well go in because I keep having this yearning. I went into the shop. I saw her behind the counter at a distance mm -hmm. and I looked and then I gave this this crazy look like, do I know you? <laughs> and she looked back at me with the same type of uh, look and we started laughing <laughs> and that meant she knew me and I knew her whether it was in another life or some time I, I have no idea but yeah. we we knew each other and we became good friends and one mm -hmm. day she said I'm thinking about uh, having Tai Chi in my shop would mm -hmm. you come and would you participate and I said well, I don't know anything about Tai Chi, but I trust you. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I'll see you Saturday. Mm -hmm. So for nine weeks, I started practicing Tai Chi uh, Simplified, which is Tai Chi 24 with mm -hmm. her. And I think it was four of the women that were in the shops. There were five of them and me and our, and then six, there was six total because there was the five women, there was me, I was six. And then our instructor who was a, by a kung fu master who turned tai chi master she gave up kung fu to teach tai chi and she only spoke chinese so my lessons were in chinese even though i only speak english but it's like the old saying monkey see monkey do i just okay <laughs> if you if you move right i'll move right if you move left i'll move left your hand goes up my hand goes up and meanwhile i had these voices on on each side of me and they were saying well this is what she's saying in english and so they were interpreting for me so it was it was a great class and that's where i started learning uh tai chi and i didn't know much about qigong until I started practicing more, started learning more, uh, picked up YouTube videos, started practicing on my own until I met my my last two masters who spoke English <laughs> and they were able to teach me the final points of uh, th this internal martial art. I love that. Ooh, internal martial art. That is huge. The um... The first time, my puppy, <laughs> you hear her feet. <laughs> the first time, um, I so I found some tai, a Tai Chi instructor on on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure it's the simplified version because it was like 24 movements or whatever. Um, yes. And I noticed that there was, like, it felt like an emotional release for me. So I love that you referenced that as a the inner. Um, how did you call it inner internal internal in, martial art internal martial arts so i love that um <clears throat> so when you first started 
doing it yourself. Did you notice a shift in any of your emotional energy or anything like that? What when and not, not, not really. Okay. <laughs> not at, not at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The only thing I noticed at the beginning was there was there was this calmness. Mm -hmm. There was this calmness in 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 making the moves. There was there was a a rhythm mm -hmm. and there was a calmness. And as I learned more, I was told, oh, okay, you need to connect the breath with the movement. And even though, like I said, it was in Chinese, but they were explaining it to me in English. Mm -hmm. And I said, so when my hand goes out, mm -hmm. I exhale. And when my hand comes in, mm -hmm. I inhale. Or when I, they, they used to call it giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. So you give it and then you receive it. Mm -hmm. So I exhale, mm -hmm. and then I inhale. So anytime in uh, Qigong or Tai Chi, say for instance, my hands are going out and up, mm -hmm. then I'm inhaling, and when I come down, then I'm going to exhale. Mm -hmm. But if I go out, I'm inhaling, expand, I inhale, and when I bring my hands together, then I exhale. Interesting. It's always in mm -hmm. and out. And the breath is from one inch below your belly button, which is the lower dantian. Mm -hmm. And you bring the breath in like a baby. Mm -hmm. You inflate your stomach, mm -hmm. bring the breath into your lungs, hold it. Mm -hmm. and then, you, then you let it out either through your mouth or through your nose, depending mm -hmm. on what's comfortable for you. Got it. I love that. Just so if you said qigong, you said like, how did qigong like get there eventually, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, qigong. As I started reading, I started to understand that tai chi. People say tai chi, tai chi, tai chi chuan, uh, and so there's many iterations, but tai chi is is basically the shortened version of tai chi chuan okay. which is a uh, ultimate supreme uh boxing mm -hmm. so tai chi chuan means ultimate supreme boxing it's mm -hmm. like what they call shadow boxing mm -hmm. like boxing by yourself mm -hmm. your movements are boxing by yourself you're blocking mm -hmm. you know blocking or grabbing or striking a elbow mm -hmm. strike you can give a shoulder bump uh you can give a a push a pull i mean so it's that's that's where the uh, internal martial art comes in the yeah. tai chi the, the the qigong part has to do with uh chi q i pronounced like c h i mm -hmm. so so q i is is chi Mm -hmm. Right. So spelt the same way as C H I. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part about that whole process is it's about the breathing and it's mm -hmm. about where the energy go. So mm -hmm. Q I is the energy that animates all life. Mm -hmm. And as I explain it to my students, because I try to I try to separate the religious sort of uh, stigma sometimes qigong and tai chi has with it because mm -hmm. some people in certain who have sort of religious practices they think i want to teach a a a religious or spiritual type of practice to people and that's not mm -hmm. what that's not what my intentions are my intentions are to provide uh these exercises for healing and mm -hmm. also for mindfulness and and meditative purposes and if you want to associate a, a spiritual or religious connotation to the to the QI or to the key, and when we say key, we're talking about Reiki. The last part of Reiki is key, that's Japanese, or Ashe, which is like uh, uh, West African Ashe, or we could say Numa. Or we could go to India and say prana. And so that energy, or we could say spirit, if you're if you're 
Christian or either Christian or uh, in Judaism or maybe Islam, we could say spirit, uh, but it's the same energy that emanates and perpetuates all life. The rocks, the birds, the trees, the plants, the dogs, the animals. I mean, the, everything has has chi. And when we connect with that chi, uh, we find harmony. Mm -hmm. There's a heaven chi, there's an earth chi, and then there's a human chi. So mm -hmm. when we connect the heavenly, the earthly with the body, we have the three in one. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do is harmonize between those three to bring everything into balance. Mm -hmm. Just like the shirt I wear today, this is a, uh, this is the Tai Chi symbol, mm -hmm. the circle, the circle by itself without the Tai Chi symbols in it is called Wu Ji. Mm -hmm. And then when we start moving in the Tai Chi movements, mm -hmm. then we have the yin and the, and the, and the yang. Mm -hmm. So the light is yin and the dark is the yang, just like a turtle. The belly is yin and the back is yang. Like with the sun and the moon, the left, the right, the up, the down, the wide, the narrow, the tall, the short. There's a duality uh, in everything. So with the, the chi, I can feel it. And even here during our session, I, we can show people how to actually feel the chi while they're looking at the the YouTube video, we can, we can, I will demonstrate how they can actually feel it, which I think would be pretty cool. Yeah. And then gong is the G O N G. Mm -hmm. It's cause people here, like they say, is it qui gong or qi gong or <laughs> qi gong? <laughs> how do you pronounce it? It's called qi gong. And the qi is the energy the animates all life. It's the energy you feel in your body, you feel between your hands. So you feel it all the time. You probably never call it that. And then the gong is to nurture, to foster, to culminate, to build it. It's like it's like putting good food in your body and going to the gym and working out. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go to the gym and you don't put a certain amount of carbs in your body, you're not going to have enough energy <laughs> to do your workout. Mm -hmm. And after you work out, you put protein in your body to replenish and build those muscles. Mm -hmm. It's not that you put protein in to go to the gym, you put carbs in to go to the gym so you can have the fuel. So what we want to do with Qigong is we want to fuel the Qi. We want to get the Qi moving. We want to cultivate it. Mm -hmm. For example, I bring my hands up. Mm -hmm. In my practice, I feel warm. Mm -hmm. I take my hands and I take my energy. I send my chi down, down my lower dantian, under my perineum. I bring it up my back, in the middle of my back. Mm -hmm. I bring it up to, if you feel in the back of your neck, there's a knot that's mm -hmm. in the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. Then my chi goes there. Then it comes out of my arms. Mm -hmm. and it comes down my shoulders, my arms, and it comes into my hands. Mm -hmm. On that movement, I might bring my hands up. I bring them up over my head. If you're in yoga, you talk about the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So the top of your head, crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So just think, you know, a puppet master has my head pulled up with a string so that everything is flowing down my head, my neck, my mm -hmm. thoracic vertebrae, my lumbar vertebrae, my sacrum. Everything is housed right there everything pointing down to the earth with my feet rooted totally and planted on the earth. When mm -hmm. my hands come up now, and even now I'm sitting down because I can do, we can do Qigong seated or we can do it standing. Yeah. Now, when I just brought my, my chi up, perineum up my back through my arms, I feel it. Now, mm -hmm. when I bring it down over my head, I bring it down, my hands are cool. I feel cool energy as it comes down. And I learned this practice from one of my Qigong masters who teaches uh, healing mm -hmm. uh, Qigong. So she teaches healing Qigong, yeah, which is pretty cool. So she's mm -hmm. been able to teach me how to differentiate between the hot and the cold based on what type of energy I need. 
So is the hot. Okay. So how, what is the difference between the two energies? Like if you need warm energy, what does that, what does that mean that you're in need of? I, for, for, for me, mm -hmm. uh, even talking with you mm -hmm. and I've known you for a while, a minute and love the person you are, the energy that you bring. Thank you. I still get nervous. I get nervous. <laughs> I don't care what type of presentation I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I have this anxious energy before I go on camera or I present. Mm -hmm. So then I will take my chi, I'll bring it up and then I'll, and it cools my body down. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's a way for me to just settle down Mm -hmm. And I call it washing myself with chi, mm -hmm. washing myself like a, like a chi waterfall yeah, the chi to water. cool me down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, some people, some people need that, you know, mm -hmm. especially some of us who have a uh, high energy, mm -hmm. we need something that will help calm us down. Otherwise, um, uh, it sort of drives us a little crazy in a way. Yeah. So when I teach Tai Chi and Qigong to, uh, elementary kids, I always ask for feedback and they say, now I can go back to class and I feel calm. Mm -hmm. Now I feel at peace. Mm -hmm. Now my energy, my high energy is gone. Now I feel like I'm ready to study or ready to read. So even at an early age, the children can associate with the mm -hmm. way they feel based upon how the chi is moving in their bodies. That's really, that's really cool. Um, it's not about suppressing who you are. It's just about enhancing your capabilities, like in a more, mm, what's the word? I don't know. Cause you know, sometimes people are like, well, this is how I am, but sometimes how you are may need to shift depending on what situation you're in. So I like that it gives people the ability to, to shift into a different drive or speed <laughs> in order to, <laughs> to fulfill a purpose or something that they really wanted to do. Because I have lots of energy, but yeah. I also have, I think I'm a chameleon. Mm -hmm. I think I adapt to different situations to, to, to achieve the best outcome. Mm -hmm. And it's not uh, being passive or it's not being submissive sometimes is more of this situation requires me to be, this situation requires me to look and act like a cowboy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what you mean looking and act like a cowboy? I said, when I go to Texas and I go to conferences, I take my Western wear with me. Mm -hmm. And no matter who's in the crowd, cowboys are in Texas. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what shade this chameleon is. Mm -hmm. People associate that look with, oh, well, he must be from here. He must, <laughs> you know, he must know what's going on. So I, mm -hmm. I've used that for many, many years to mm -hmm. just be in the best place and have the best things happening to me. Yeah. But getting back to the chi, what else would you like to know about the chi? <laughs> I just, I would like to know how could someone use it, like to their benefit with respect to health and wellness, like. I, I know personally like, it helped, you know, for it's good for stress. It's good. Like, so just some of the, some of the things that come to mind from that question. Um, um, there's, there's a couple of things that come to mind with that question. And I talked earlier about internal martial art. I said, I said that, um, uh, Tai Chi is like internal martial art. Um, uh, like once we activate the Tai Chi. We start at Wu Ji, which is no movement, nothing external, nothing internal. Mm -hmm. Once we step out, as soon as we shift our weight and we step out, we enter into Tai Chi, the yin and the yang. We're going to give and we're going to receive. We're mm -hmm. going to move left and then we're going to move right. And we're just constantly moving. We're never stopping. You know, if I put my foot down, toe to heel, mm -hmm. then my arms get activated and I turn and I keep moving. Mm -hmm. I never stop. At the end, I'll grab my Tai Chi ball 
and then I will bring my hands back down. I'll step in back into Wuji. So I'll step back into the circle with no differentiation. I'll step back into it. Mm -hmm. But as long as I'm moving, mm -hmm. I'm in Tai Chi. And my masters have always taught me Tai Chi is always moving. You never stop. Mm -hmm. Herbert, Herbert, why are you stopping? Why are you stopping? You're not doing Tai Chi. You're doing Qigong now. You're doing Qigong. You're mm -hmm. not doing Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. So Qigong basically is uh, the Baduan Jin is the one that I do the most. It's called Badwan Jin. It's called Silk Reeling. It's mm -hmm. like the eight, I call it the eight brocades. Mm -hmm. And the eight brocades are eight Qigong exercises that will mm -hmm. open up all your muscles, your joints, and your fascia mm -hmm. and connective tissues to heal different parts of your body. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm considered to be right-handed but really I'm left in it. Mm. I was, I was, I was forced to be right-handed because I went to school. I'm 68 years old, by the way, for mm -hmm. all the audience to let you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say that, you know, Qigong and Tai Chi does have some um, anti-aging properties too. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the genes and stuff that I have probably has a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, and you're healthy. But when, and I, yeah, I don't, you know me. I don't, I don't eat meat and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm almost like a monk without being a monk. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Um, so I, I think about the eight broad caves, and the eight broad caves are working on different parts of my body. Mm -hmm. uh, first of the eight broad caves is pushing up heaven. Your hands come up, and you're pushing up sky. You're pushing up sky. Well, when you push up sky. Uh, the benefits are it balances, clears, and makes the what they call the triple warmer mm -hmm. or the heater uh, meridian flow properly and balance, which is associated with your endocrine system or your fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, that's great because mm -hmm. I have a over, I have a over uh, active adrenal, mm -hmm. which means my adrenal gland produces a lot of cortisol. Mm -hmm. And the more cortisol my body produces, the higher my blood pressure can go. Mm -hmm. So even if I eat great, I exercise six miles a day, I'm doing my Tai Chi, my Qigong, I'm eating well, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do, drinking lots of water. Mm -hmm. Naturally, my blood pressure has a way of like being up. Mm -hmm. So I try to eat the potassium type of celery and different things like that be on anti-inflammatories, trying to do all the things with that. And by doing this exercise, it calms down my adrenal. Mm -hmm. uh, Archer, Archer pulls the bow. Mm -hmm. So I've got one hand that's like the arrow with the point and that the other hand is grabbing the string and I'm pulling back on the bow. And I'm usually standing to the side. So I'm going to the left. I inhale, exhale, come back to center. I inhale, exhale, come back to center. The benefits is to balance and replenish the kidney meridian. And the kidney meridian is where you have your power. Mm. So the kidneys, if you think about the lower Dantian, if you go to your back, that's where the kidneys are located. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing there is we're strengthening our kidneys, we're strengthening our root through the lower stance, and we strengthen our lower body. Because as you get older, the problem that most people have is they lose balance, don't have flexibility, and this will help you get in that, that horse stance. And mm -hmm. I don't know if many people who are in the audience know much about riding horses. Mm -hmm. If I started riding horses, I mean, seriously riding the horses mm -hmm. when I was 50 years old. Mm -hmm. I had never ridden a horse until I was 5 0. Mm -hmm. And I can remember all the women, because usually women are riding and the little kids are riding. There's not many guys that are riding. I mean, <laughs> you might have the guys that are riding, but they're on like Western saddles and they're acting like cowboys on weekends and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can remember one day they said, Your seat is looking good. I'm looking at them like, 
my seat is looking good. I'm sitting in a saddle. What do they mean my seat is looking good? So I go back and I ask my trainer, I go, what do they mean by my seat is looking good? They said, that means that now you're starting to feel the horse. You, you're in a horse stance and you're feeling the motion of the horse. Instead of you, the horse trotting in and you be like in the cowboy movies or you're popping up and down. <laughs> now, now they're saying, now you're, now you're getting with the gait of the horse. You're feeling the motion and you're rolling with the motion of the horse. Now you've got a good seat. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that happens in Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. Wise owl looks over shoulders. Mm -hmm. People think an owl can turn his neck 360 degrees, mm -hmm. but that's not true. <laughs> an owl can only turn his neck 270 degrees. So what we do there, horse stance, and what we're doing is we're turning that lower torso, mm -hmm. upper torso, and then we turn so that my left eye looks over my left shoulder and mm -hmm. I can see what's on the right side of my body. Mm -hmm. And then I come back to center, I inhale and I do the same thing on the other side. And for those of us who sit at the computer a lot, mm -hmm. we rarely look, yeah. we rarely, <laughs> we rarely look and it usually, you probably can't do 270 degrees because it's just not a practice that you do with this yeah. one. It cures energy depletion, consumptive illness as it works the entire spine, much like a ringed out claw. It gets rid of nudging stiff muscles mm -hmm. and pinched nerves. This exercise really improves your vitality, focus and energy level. It also wards off aging and is very beneficial for back pain all along the spine. I like it. Uh, number five, punching with angry gaze. That's the one where you make your, you make your, your, Tai Chi fist, you bring them back to the side and then you let it out with full force. Mm -hmm. Branch with one, you pull it back. And then it's a pull and a push. Pull and a push. It's like isometrics. It's a mm -hmm. pull and a push mm -hmm. where your muscles are tensioning. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you can pull and push when you get almost to the end, you can Jammer. Pull and push, get almost to 60%. Mm -hmm. And that's that's punching to a mass power. Number six, big bear turns from side to side. Sometimes they say that's where the bear the bear sways the bear sways his butt. Mm -hmm. it, it sways his butt and then it then it turns his head. It turns mm -hmm. his head and it sways his butt. I like to call it uh dragon drinks from the river. <laughs> where the dragon goes down, takes mm -hmm. a drink, you turn to one side, you straighten the opposite leg, mm -hmm. you take your buttocks and move it to the side, then you turn your shoulder down and you come up and you bring your hips forward. Mm -hmm. Because we sit, we, see, we sit most of the day, we don't open up our hip, hip flexors. And so this exercise helps with that and it goes, the exercise directly increases your life force and energy, affecting longevity, personal power, and health. Seven, touching toes, then bending forward. I call that uh, nourishing kidneys, because mm -hmm. we talked early that the kidneys is where the power is in the body, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that one, you start standing up and your hands go up. Up, up like Michael Jackson, like in the Thriller movie. Mm -hmm. And then you come all the way up, it's like arching your back. Yeah. You might even hear things popping in your chest. Yeah. Because normally people don't do that. Yeah. And then you bring your hands down as if they're floating on a cloud. Nice mm -hmm. and easy. Mm -hmm. Bring your hands back to your kidneys. Then bend down and bring your hands below your buttocks, all the way down your legs to your ankles. Mm -hmm. And then you raise up one vertebrae at a time, and you do that about five times. And this one is stimulates the yin meridian. Remember, yin is in the front, mm -hmm. yang is in the back. And I don't think I talk to people about yin and yang as far as their body. Yin is the conception vessel, yang is the opposite side. The sun 
will strike you on your back. So your back is going to be darker than your front. Like your arms, the inside of your arms are going to be light, but the outside of your arms are going to be dark. Mm -hmm. So yin, yan, mm -hmm. turtle. Underneath mm -hmm. belly, yin is light, yeah. the back is dark. So yeah. yin and yan side. A mother to protect a baby would take the baby, pull the baby into the yin and turn her back to the enemy yeah. because there's not many vital organs on the back compared yeah. to what there is on the front. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't, no. So I don't want to, I don't want to, we, we might have to do another episode because we've actually come to time because it always falls. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then the last one, real quick, is, uh -huh. uh, is, um, we call it shaking illness from the body because mm -hmm. in our armpits and our necks is what we call lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Those lymph nodes is where we have the cells that are going to attack inflammation. And so we do an exercise there to get rid of that. And those are the eight brocades, which is a very simple uh, Qigong mm -hmm. uh, that most people can do. And mm -hmm. the other two Qigongs I do before we close are, are going to be what we call the E D. The Yi Jing is one we call muscle of strengthening and tensioning. Mm -hmm. And the third Qigong exercise I do is called the Luhan 13, mm -hmm. which adds movement similar to Tai Chi. Mm. It's, so, it's so interesting. I love how the different movements play such a major role on, on your health. Um, so here's your hand real mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. Little finger is your heart. Your heart meridian is meridian is in your little finger. Yes. Your lung meridian is in your thumb, and your pericardium is in your middle is your middle finger. Mm. So when you're making the movements, you're activating the different meridians to 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 uh, affect mm -hmm. that part of your body. Um, when you were talking about health, so yeah. that's a simple. I'm just giving a simple why why our hands are not like this <laughs> when mm -hmm. our fingers are like this mm -hmm. and we're moving with our hands up or in a certain or we bring our hands up in a certain movement because we activate the different meridians through the body. that's a whole nother episode <laughs> yes I, i'm i'm here for you anytime <laughs> i appreciate that well probably actually if you're open to it just doing like simple movements um so we'll pull the camera back so we can stand up and and do this yes movements. that would be i fun. can do that i would love i would love to uh, on another episode just take people through some of the movements and yeah. to be able to help them uh breathe and understand with a little music in the background to see how the flow goes yeah i like that that, that would be great because it's we could talk about it and it's really interesting, but when you start doing it is when you actually can, oh, you can like feel it and understand and fully understand. But, yes, but, totally. Yeah, so I love it. Um, so just real quick, let, let people know mm -hmm. how they can get in touch with you because you do remote, I imagine. You, do you teach remote? Yes, I do. As well? Yeah, so let folks know how the best way to get in touch with you. And I'll also have it in the description below, of course. But okay. yeah. It is probably on the Instagram on the Eat Your Medicine, E A T U R Medicine. I love it. This is one part of medicine, so is the stuff that you put in your body. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Herbert, thank you so much for being on the show. I, I knew it would be enlightening, and so I'm <laughs> glad you <laughs> glad you were able to um, hop on here with me and, and just talk about both modalities as a as a healing as ways to that people can start to heal in different areas of their lives so i appreciate your time and your expertise it was an honor i went to a guy's farm this morning picked up some veggies he was given to me and uh so i'm happy i'm getting ready to uh can some tomatoes i love and with it. that thank namaste you. namaste <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you for those who tuned in live and for those of you catching this later. If you've learned something, go ahead and share it. Um, it's not something, at least not anything I grew up with, learning about Tai Chi and Qigong. So if we can expose people to this earlier in life, like he talked about the kids and how it helped, um, please do. Please do. Share it with parents and everyone. So if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click that button, and uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao, everyone.
and be well with Nikki. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Applesauce. Applesauce. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.